Oh, hello. Morbo the Annihilator here. Gruesome death awaits us all! Doom! <laughs> Hi everyone, Morbo here. Today's topic is going to be about fleet configurations. Now when we talk about fleet configurations today, we're going to start by first assuming that you're going to have a fleet of up to the maximum of eight ships, so you're running a four to five star battle. Now this is also for regular play, not for arena play, as arena play only allows you to have four on a team. And being matched, if you have two teams of four, it's not guaranteed. So what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about what ships you should have. Now, when we talk about the what ships, these ships are going to be independent of, a ma of whatever map you're on. We should still be able to do the same configurations. Now, there are multiple configurations possible, so we're going to go through them. Now, I'm going to start with what we should start with. Now, the first ships we're going to start with, of course, are destroyers. So, in my example here, the first one, I'm going to take that we're going to have three destroyers. So, in this case, I grab three quick destroyers here. Okay, and then we're going to have... Um, oops, we'll take three destroyers. Then we're going to grab, say, a Cleveland for our cruiser. And we're going to grab uh, three battleships. And we'll go and we'll also grab um, probably another cruiser. So this is what we're going to start with. And this will be a default fleet. We're going to go by this as our default, where we're going to have three destroyers, two cruisers, and three battleships. Now, the reason being is your destroyers, no matter what map you're on, are going to give you your eyes. They're also going to be your quick forwards, highlight the enemy. Your battleships here are going to be the ones who are going to lay in the most damage to the enemy, of course. And then, of course, your cruisers are the supported between both. If a destroyer goes down, cruiser can help uh, uh, with the eyes. It's got a better range than a destroyer for sight, or sorry, than a battleship for sight. But it also carries more firepower. Now, I specific, I have specific ships here, the Kajiro and the Benson. These are not necessarily the ones you need to have. I'm not saying one Kajiro and two Bensons. I'm saying you can have a team with a, a Kajiro, a Benson, and a Taiwan Benson, or with a dirt ski. Um, the, the ship itself doesn't matter. It's the type we're only talking about. So we're only going to talk about destroyers. General, and same thing with battleships. You don't have to use a Schornhorst, a Colorado, and a Mutsu. You could have a Nagato in there. You could have two Nuts, Mutsus and a Nagato. Doesn't matter. Whatever ship you want to take, we're just trying to get up the appropriate ships that you want to have within this battle. Okay? So this is going to be our first uh, group that we're going to talk about. Okay. So the next time, the next group that we're going to talk about is we're going to set up another configuration. So we're going to start. And we're going to go back to our three destroyers. Now you're going to notice something. Every single time I recommend three destroyers. No matter what other ships you have in here, three as destroyers are is very important. Um, reason why we don't go down to two, of course, is that... Um, with two, one goes down. If the two are off to one side, it lets uh, a huge area that's not lit up for the eyes. Or when one goes down, the other two can always back it up. And the reason why I don't say four is because now you're taking away a lot of firepower from having the upper class ships by making half your ships destroyers. Yes, they're fast. They lay down mines or, just, or the uh, torpedoes. But they don't actually create a whole lot of damage that they can from a distance like a battleship can or a cruiser can. So with the next one, we're going to take our three destroyers. Then we're going to throw in one cruiser. And this time, we're going to make it a little different and throw in a sub to go with it. I'm going to lay the sub over here. And then we'll go back with our... 
three battleships. Now, when playing with this formation, you've got to do your activities a little slightly different. Now, to destroy your still go up, create eyes, battleship, sit in the back, destroy. You only got one cruiser to do it in between, and now your uh, submarine has to act differently. Submarines typically slower than any other ship, so they take longer to get into battle, and if they get sunk, they take longer to get back. If there's three destroyers on the other side, they're probably trying to aim to try to take out the... Uh, submarine itself but the purpose of a sub is to go in and try to inflict damage um, with its torpedoes it gets it, it can hide underneath water until it gets within certain range of ships where they have underwater um, scan range but the purpose of a sub is to try to go around or sneak around if you want to call it that's what they do to go around to attack the battleships because a battleship cannot hit a submarine so if a submarine is in one spot with a battleship along the battleships unless it's a pretty bad sub pilot or a pretty bad a pretty great battleship um like the Schwarnhorst happens to have two torpedo tubes with it so it can shoot something at the submarine but most uh, battleships can't do anything against submarines so the submarines will typically take out a battleship okay so that's the next one so what we want to do from now is we're going to say we're going to remove the sub and instead we're going to say we're going to put in an aircraft carrier keeping the same formation so all the other ships still act the same um, an aircraft carrier will sit in the back and use its planes to scout and cause damage um, something like the tahoe is a good one because it comes with uh, quite a few torpedo bombers which are good for doing a whole lot of damage. The problem is it takes time for planes to fly forward and fly back. The, you don't want to leave your aircraft carrier way too far out of battle where it's not going to do the damage or it's going to take a long time for the planes to get into the battle compared to if it sat out. But you don't want to rush it too far in because it, all it's got is basically the equivalent of secondary guns of a battleship. So if your aircraft carrier gets too close, battleships will end up targeting it because it's a slow-moving object and be able to take it out very quickly. Same as uh, uh, the destroyers can run in, hit it with torpedoes very quickly and sink it, taking it out of the battle for a while because any planes that are either on deck or in the air um, cannot uh, continue so you have to respawn from the beginning and go back so with a destroyer or sorry with a uh, aircraft carrier you want to get into a medium section within it now say if we wanted to do it slightly different and we wanted to have um, we'll take out the cruiser and we'll put back in the sub now this one's slightly different what i would recommend for something like this of course is the battleships to tag up with the destroyers so that one destroyer is giving one battleship eyes and equivalent them off the aircraft carrier sit in the back send its planes in do additional damage and the submarine is always by itself trying to take out as much as it can with its torpedoes as good as it can um, on most maps so this is another possibility now if you wanted to have people who needed to do a sub or an aircraft carrier you could always turn around and bring your Cleveland back in but in bringing back your Cleveland then I would recommend saying removing one of your battleships so we can have a Cleveland in here as well now yeah that is oops, slightly different uh, you reduced your firepower by taking out a battleship, but with the Cleveland, it will go in between with the de destroyers. Now, again, you reduce your firepower, but you have the additional ones of going off with a submarine or an aircraft carrier. I would always recommend, and I'll highly recommend, minimum three destroyers. You can use four. I don't recommend it, but if people want to use more there's quite a few people who do like to use the destroyers at the same time as well but with that you're reducing so if we did add another destroyer we take out power of something else so in this case if we're going to have these three uh, 
a cruiser and two battleships, I would recommend no sub or no aircraft carrier if you wanted to add a fort destroyer. Never would I take out another battleship to add a fort destroyer with the other ones. You're just unbalancing your power way too much for this game. Okay, and for the last part of our topic here about fleet grouping, we want to always make sure, and I've gone back to using our default fleet group, the one I most recommend, because in any battle, it's the one that's going to give you the best chance. Um, but you can, of course, either take it um, like this, or if you want, you can always remove, remove one of the Clevelands and take an extra battleship here. So what I'm going to do is I'll put the battleship down here and just say. So you always want to match up to be able to have at least one destroyer, one battleship. One destroyer, one battleship, one destroyer, one battleship. Reason being, battleships don't have very good eyes. Can't see, but do a hell of a lot of damage. Destroyers are the ones who give the eyes to the battleship. Once it highlights it, it also can lay down minefields. Um, the three I have up here all have mine lane capabilities. If you have the uh, dirt ski, uh, it only has torpedo tubes. So these ones have both mines and torpedoes. Plus it has great range for giving eyes to our uh, battleships. Then of course we have our, uh, uh, our cruisers which can add somewhere in the middle here. So I would recommend if you're going to do something like this, according to the map, and I hope you stay tuned for our next um, our next topic, which will be, we'll start going into the individual maps and the different strategies that you can use on those maps. But for now, I'm going to just use this, and I'm always going to use this as my default fleet group for those maps. So you might want to pay attention to that. Now, of course, your strategy is going to be slightly different if you use one of the other different types of ships. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you pay attention for how we're going to use these different types of configurations for our next maps. Thanks and have a good day. Hi all, thanks for watching. Make sure you click on the like if you like this video and click on the subscribe button to get updated when future videos are available.